Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to start making uh, three different things for uh, Pancake Day. So Pancake Day in the UK is always on Shrove Tuesday, the day before uh, Ash Wednesday, which is when Lent starts I believe. And uh, traditionally we have a thin crepe-like pancake uh, which is then uh, often uh, sprinkled with some sugar and then drizzled with some lemon juice and then rolled up and that's how we tend to eat them and I'm going to make those and show you how to do those I'm also going to make some scotch pancakes or drop scones uh, that have just a little bit of uh, orange in them and then uh, have some bananas and butterscotch to serve them with so there are two recipes that I'm going to uh, do videos for later but the one I'm going to do now is Staffordshire oat cakes. These again look rather like that thin crepe like pancake but it's made with oats and flour and it's yeasted so we leave it to ferment for a couple of hours before we actually finish making the batter and cook them off. And these again are thin pancakes and they're traditionally served with um, cheese and bacon wrapped inside them or sausage, cheese and sausage wrapped inside them but you can put whatever you want you can serve them uh, with fruit if you want to there's no reason why that, that wouldn't work uh, as a healthier alternative to the normal pancake but I'm going to make these and show you how easy they are to make so I'll go on to the ingredients and for this I have uh, 150 grams uh, which is one cup based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup of plain flour. I also have 150 grams of oatmeal. Now what I did was I took 150 grams of my oats that I use for my breakfast and I blitzed them in the processor uh, until they turned uh, much much finer and uh, once I'd uh, done that I measured them out and that works out at one and a half cups plus one uh, tablespoon. I have 300 millilitres, one and a quarter cups of lukewarm milk and I have 350 millilitres of lukewarm water which works out at one and a half cups minus two teaspoons. I have a teaspoon of sugar, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, uh, three grams, one teaspoon of instant yeast and a quarter of a teaspoon of baking power, baking soda which I will use right at the end. So I'll put that to one side for a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the flour and the oats into a larger bowl with the sugar and the salt. And I'll just mix that around with a whisk. And then I'll put the yeast in as well and mix it again. I should say I also have some oil here which is to lightly grease the pan that I'm going to um, cook these on. You can do it on a griddle if you want to but I'm doing it in a frying pan because it will help hold the shape potentially. So let's mix together and into that I'm going to pour my milk and 200 millilitres of the water. The other 150 millilitres I will save for later. And I'm simply going to mix this together until it's all fully combined. And I have no lumps.
it's good like that. So what I'm going uh, to do now is simply cover that with some plastic wrap. And I'm going to put that into uh, a warm place for it to ferment for about two hours. I want it to become nice and uh, frothy and bubbly on the top. And at that stage, I'll come back, we'll mix the baking soda with some water, put it into uh, our batter, mix it around, and then we're almost ready to start uh, making the Staffordshire oat cakes. It's been two hours and the uh, batter for the Staffordshire oat cakes has fermented very nicely. So this is what it looks like now. And as you can see, it's very wobbly and frothy. So I'm just going to um, knock that down just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I have my remaining 150 grams of um, warm water and I'm going to put a little drop of that into my baking soda and stir that around so that the baking soda dissolves and then I'm going to pour that into my batter and mix it around and then I'm going to add probably most if not all of the remainder of the water until I have a nice quite loose batter And I think that's probably good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that with my plastic wrap again. And I'm going to leave it for 15 minutes. And during that 15 minutes, I'll make sure I have everything else ready. So I have a uh, a frying pan is not a very large one it's um, I think the diameter of the base is only about eight inches maybe slightly larger and I'm going to grease that very lightly with some oil and I'm going to get that uh, up to or well, hot but on a medium heat and then they'll be ready to um, ladle in some of the batter and cook the Staffordshire oat cakes. So I'll be back with you in 15 minutes when we're ready to do that. So my batter is now um, bubbling a little bit and I'm just going to give it a stir around with a ladle and I have a pan, a frying pan which I have greased with a paper towel just lightly and it's on a medium heat and I'm going to simply ladle in some batter and spread it around like that and I'm going to leave that for about two minutes probably until it's cooked on the underside and as you can see straight away bubbles start to appear on the top 
and it should dry out on the top and become dull. And then I'm going to flip it over and cook it on the other side probably for about a minute. So that looks quite good like that. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to put it onto a clean tea towel and fold the towel over on it to keep it warm while I do the remainder. And what I have to do is lightly grease the pan again between each one. So here are the eight Staffordshire oat cakes which I baked and I've just laid them out. This is the top of three of them, that's the second side that we, the side we flipped over. This is the underside, so the, the first side of baking and these are the top again. And how these are usually served is that you would put some bacon and some cheese uh, down on them and then you would fold them into a wrap or fold them in half. It's entirely up to you how you eat them, but you can fold them like that or fold them in half. So I'm not going to do that now. Um, I'm going to freeze six of them or maybe five of them and I'll have two tomorrow for my breakfast, but I'll taste one now just so that um, you can see. And as you can see, they're perfectly foldable. They are very, very good. And uh, from watching other videos on YouTube about Staffordshire oat cakes, I think that these are usually eaten as a breakfast item or a morning item, so that people who have worked in the potteries or in the mines overnight would buy these from a hole in the wall shop on their way home, stuffed with uh, cheese and bacon or sausages or whatever and people going to work would also buy them and take them and workmen during the morning. So, um, it tastes very, very good. It tastes even better if it's been filled with um, that uh, cheese, sausage, bacon, egg, whatever you want to put in. You could also, if you wanted to, put some herbs into the batter or some garlic powder into the batter, whatever you want to do, really. So this is one uh, thing which I think is a nice variation to pancake day. Um, and you could serve them sweet as well if you wanted to, but uh, nice variation to pancake day. And I'll go on and I'll make the other two, the scotch pancakes and the crepe type pancakes. So you can see those videos as well. So that's gonna be it for this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me the thumbs up below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen, there will be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for this recipe. And I'll put a link below the video as well.
I should say um, I got this recipe and or based mine but got it from uh, Joy to the World Cooking I think it was called. I'll put a link to that below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future so until then happy baking.